Drawing clasps, zipper pulls, and other complex trims in fashion can feel like a total pain, especially if you're trying to draw them from scratch with the pen tool. It's really hard to get accurate curves that are smooth and look nice. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick of how you can draw these very complex shapes using just basic circles, squares, rectangles, and simple shapes that Illustrator has built into it. Make sure to watch to the end where I'm also gonna show you how to fill your trims with a gradient so that they look realistic. Thanks so much for watching. I'm So Heidi, founder of Successful Fashion Design designer.com and you're watching fashion industry secrets revealed all right so to start we're going to draw the zipper pull first and i'm going to go slower and step by step and then i'm going to draw the clasp which is a little bit more complex i'm going to go a little faster but i'll still walk through all the steps that i do to create this artwork you'll notice in my layers panel i've got these and i just copied and pasted these in from google i always start with an image because why well, try to draw this out of your head um, when we have the internet to grab these great images to use as reference uh, i have got the layer with the images on them locked and i've got a new layer that i'm going to draw on so i don't accidentally know anything out of the way to start I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool hotkey is the letter M and you'll notice I have no fill color and a green stroke so this is just so that I don't see any fill color through which was gonna block what I'm trying to trace and the green fill color is just nice to be able to see the contrast against the black zipper pull here the first thing I'm gonna draw is the actual pull versus the head or the car, which is the part that actually attaches to the zipper. And so the pull, you might think you wanna draw with some type of oval, but actually I see it as a rectangular shape. Now I'm gonna do this just by clicking and dragging with the rectangle tool. If I misplace this at all, I can hold the space bar to move it around before I release. And I just wanna draw a nice rectangle around that. Once I've done that, I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool specifically, and I'm gonna grab this anchor point and nudge this over one, two, three. I'm gonna grab this anchor point, nudge it over one, two, three. And then what I see is this little circle here, and this is a very cool tool called the corner widget that I want to use to create nice rounded corners. This is gonna be so powerful as you go through drawing all of these trims and you're gonna love this feature. If you don't see that, you're gonna wanna come up to view and make sure your corner widget is turned on. This is new, not new right now, but if you're in, I'll have to, I don't know off the top of my head, I'll have to put it on the screen, whichever version it was introduced in. If you're in an earlier version, you don't have this. Um, so make sure you're in that version. I'll, again, I'll drop that on the screen after in post-production. So then I'm gonna hit, hold the shift key and grab this anchor point. Now I've got corner widgets in both of these and I'm just gonna click and drag on that little corner widget until I get the curve that I want. Come down, grab these two anchor points, again, using the direct selection tool specifically, holding the shift key to select both anchor points, click and drag in until I get a nice curve. Now it goes dark red when, or thick red, when I've pulled as far as it will let me, which means it's like creating basically a perfect circle there. So you can see as we pull out a little bit, uh, but that looks really good, that perfect circle there. So now I've got that basic shape drawn and that was pretty easy if you ask me. The next thing I wanna do is draw this portion where the zipper pull connects to the car or the slider um, or the head. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a basic rectangle again. I can hold the space bar to line that up. I care less about lining it up to the photo and ultimately more about lining it up to the artwork that I'm drawing. I'm gonna use the align tool at the end to make sure all my shapes are lined up nicely. But I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. And again, I think I see a little bit of curve in these ones up here at the top. And I see more curve at the bottom. If the curve is the same around all four of them, you can use the direct selection tool in all four corners at once. But I see a slightly different curve on both of those. So I wanna do them independently. Okay, then we have to do the actual slider itself. So what do I see there? So I'm gonna actually grab my ellipse tool and I'm gonna draw an ellipse. Again, I'm holding the space bar as I draw this, which is allowing me to move this around. So I do see the ellipse sort of happening like this and then there's cutouts here. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make some cutouts there. Again, I'm gonna hold the space bar All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reflect this oval over to the other side so that I know it's perfectly reflected and it is the same oval on the other side, meaning it'll be symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my reflect tool, which is hotkey letter O, it's also hiding under the rotate tool. And with this selected, I'm gonna hover over on 
the anchor point for this oval here. I wanna reflect it directly along the center of this oval. And so I'm gonna hover until I see that anchor point, which is the center of that oval. And I'm gonna hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And I'm gonna Option or Alt click right on that anchor point. What that does is it defines the axis of reflection. So I wanted to reflect this object, which I had selected. I wanted to use the center of this oval as the axis for reflection. And I wanted to uh, make a copy of it while I reflect it. So what I'm doing, again, I hold the Option or Alt click on that anchor point there. I'm not actually doing anything with that anchor point other than using it as a reference point for the center. What this does by option or alt clicking with the reflect tool is it opens up a reflect panel. Uh, if you get a weird result, meaning you maybe have clicked on horizontal or you've got some angle defined here, that's fine. Just go ahead and click vertical. That's the reflection that we want. Always turn on your preview to make sure you're getting the result that is desired. From here, you go ahead and just hit copy instead of OK and that reflects it and copies it at the same time. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this oval, this oval, and hold the shift key to select this oval, and I'm gonna use the Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool works similarly to the Pathfinder if you're familiar with it, but I think it's a lot more user-friendly and just a little bit, mm, it works differently, but similarly, I don't know. I wind up using the Shape Builder most of the time over the Pathfinder tool uh, because it just is a little bit more, the user interface is a little more friendly. So let's jump into that. Jump into that. So the keyboard shortcut to get to that is Shift M. I actually always forget where it is on the toolbar here, but it's right on the right hand side. It looks like this, but Shift M is your hotkey to get to that. Now what the Shape Builder tool allows you to do is you can click and drag to merge shapes. That's actually not what we wanted to do. So I'm gonna do undo, Command or Control Z. If you hold the Option or Alt key, you'll notice the little cursor changes from a plus to a minus. And what you can do is then subtract shapes. So what I wanna do is I wanna delete these two and I wanna delete these two. So I've just subtracted those shapes. So essentially what it allowed me to do is take multiple overlapping shapes and either subtract or merge them together, which gives me this nice shape that I've got here, which is looking pretty good. I do wanna kind of soften these corners here because I think in reality, they'd be a little bit rounded. So again, I'll grab my direct selection tool, use my corner widget to just pull those in and that looks really nice. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a rectangle here at the bottom because I think that that is what would finish that shape off really well. I'll grab my selection tool, select both of those, and now I'm gonna hold the, grab the shape builder tool, shift M, and I'm gonna merge all these shapes together. Now I don't have any of these other objects selected, so they're not being affected. It's right now, it's just that, these two shapes I'm using to draw out the slider. So now those are merged together and it looks pretty good. The last thing that I wanna do is draw the ovals that create the cutouts on my zipper pull itself. So I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool, hotkey letter L, and I'm gonna click and drag to draw this circle. Again, I can hold the space bar to move that around. That looks pretty good. And I'll draw one more oval up here and again, hold the space bar until it looks like it's aligned. That looks good. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do actually want all of this to be aligned center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all of these shapes. And at this point, let's actually move these off of the photo because we don't need that for reference anymore. So I'm gonna align all of these center. I can do that with the align tools that come up at the top. If you don't see those, just come over to align and grab the horizontal center line. Once those are all aligned, I'm gonna grab this shape and this shape and this shape. Now you could just say, okay, well, those look pretty good. The whole thing looks pretty good. In fact, let's, let's, I'm gonna move on from here and I'll go backwards to do the next thing I was gonna do. That looks pretty good. So let's change this to a black stroke and a white fill. You can also hit the letter D for default, which gives you default uh, fill and stroke. And it looks pretty good, but our stacking order is a little bit out of whack. So let's fix that. I'm gonna grab this and choose object arrange send to back. I could also do the keyboard shortcut. And then this here we need to bring to the front, right? So I'm gonna use keyboard shortcut to do that. Now the problem here is that this is not actually cut out. And if I change this to have no fill color, that actually doesn't work because I don't see the slider through this. Uh, so we need to actually cut these shapes out of our pull, right? So for example, if we had a yellow garment, and this was on top of it, it wouldn't be reality because we can't actually see the garment through it. So I need to grab these three shapes here, whoops, and use the shape builder on these. So I'm gonna shift M to grab my shape builder tool. Again, the option or alt key gives me the minus and I wanna delete that shape and delete that shape. And so now what I've got 
is this zipper pull, which is drawn accurately where the shapes are actually cut out. Now again, this is inaccurate because this would actually be in front. So let's bring that to the front. Now we are all good. And so I will grab all of these. I will group them together and I can delete this object here. And I've got a nice zipper pull and slider all drawn very quickly. Let's jump over to our clasp and let's do this at like twice the speed. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to no fill and I want a bright stroke color. We'll do pink on this one. And so here's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm just gonna draw a rectangle tool. I'm gonna use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. I might not call all of them out, but hopefully you got enough from that first tutorial. Okay, so there's that. Grab my direct selection tool. I'm gonna nudge this over. One, two, three. Mm, three, I think is good. One, two, three. Maybe I'm gonna do four actually. All right. And we'll nudge that over one and that over one. Okay, grab these two corners pull that in really tight. These two corners don't need to be pulled in. The next thing I'm gonna do is draw this shape here. Direct selection tool. Um, and I think just these top corners I want around, so I'm gonna pull those in. And then I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool again, hotkey letter M to draw this bottom portion. Grab my direct selection tool. I want this corner and this corner. Drag and round those. Grab these two corners drag and round those. Now I want to do the inside shape. Again, hold the space bar if you're drawing a rectangle or any type of shape in Illustrator and you want to move it around. Grab my direct selection tool, grab these two corners, pull that in, round these two. Okay, hotkey letter M to grab my rectangle tool. And this guy I see just slight rounded corners on each, so I'm just going to Pull those in just a little bit. Okay, what else do we have? We've got this circle here, and we've got another one in the middle. And we'll align those really quickly. All right, what else do we have? We've got this cutout here. So I'm gonna draw, um, it's not quite a oval. I'm actually gonna use a rectangle. Okay, so I'm kind of just wanting to try to align this on all four edges to some extent. Okay, and now I'll bump this over one, two, and bump this over. One, one, two, did I bump that? Yeah, two, okay, that's all right. Okay, we'll pull this up. I don't like how this is looking at all. So I'm actually gonna do this as an oval. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do, okay. No, I don't like that. All right, let's go back to our rectangle. Hmm. Okay. Here we go. I think I just needed to have it be at a much sharper angle. That's exactly it. Because now, see, I've got this lining up parallel with that. That's the result I was trying to get. So I just needed my rectangle to be a different size. So this is not a perfect science, you guys. Sometimes as you're going through this, you're gonna need to kind of finagle the shapes. That looks like a much better fit than what we were getting before and much better fit than the oval. Okay, we've got this shape here, which I'm just gonna draw as a rectangle. And I'm gonna pull in these two corners and then I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then what we've got here is this, I don't know clasp terminology super well, not as well as I know, but uh, zipper pull terminology. So I've got that there. And I've got, I wanna make sure that hits there. Okay, because I actually wanna make a little cut out there so there's a slit. Um, I guess this little part that hinges the little prong or something, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to start using my shape builder tool to make this a finished design. And actually from here, I'm gonna move this off of the clasp itself. Go ahead and hit the letter D to give myself a default fill and stroke. And we'll start merging and dividing shapes using the shape builder tool. So I wanna merge these two together, so Shift M click and drag. Now those are one continuous shape. Send that to the back. Keyboard shortcut, I did that. This here is an actual cutout, right? So shift M, hold the option or alt key to subtract that shape there. What do we have? The rest of these I'm going to keep as individual shapes. These arguably are one shape, but I think I like how they look separate as two shapes. So we're going to leave those separate. The last thing I want to do is I actually want to cut this apart because I want to show a space in there. So what I'll do is I'll grab this, this, and this and hold shift M 
and it's not reading these as separate shapes. So here's something you need to know about the Shape Builder tool. If you're getting this problem, what you can do is a couple things. One, I'm gonna zoom in, and the reason it's not reading them as separate shapes is because you can see there's a little bit of a gap between the path and that anchor point. So you can either come in and make sure that this extends all the way to that anchor point, which then will allow the Shape Builder to detect it as separate shapes and merge or divide them individually. Otherwise, you can double click on the Shape Builder tool and you can change your gap detection length from small, which is detecting a very small little gap, to large, detecting a very large little gap. So let's change it to large and let's see. I did adjust the top one, but I didn't adjust the bottom one. So we'll grab Shift M and it's still not, ah, I know exactly why you guys. Okay, it's because this shape is still its own shape and we need to cut it out of this main shape. Sometimes it's hard to see this when you're doing it with the white fill. So arguably we could say, let's fill it with yellow and we'll actually be able to see. Shift M, take, whoops, option not control. There we go, take that shape out. Here we go, now, now it's seeing that as a separate shape. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract that and now it's cut that out, which is accurate what we would see in real life. So now we can grab all of this hot key letter D to make everything default fill and stroke and it looks pretty good, right? So now it's the last thing that we're gonna do. I'm gonna take these trims that I've drawn. We'll push them over here. I really didn't need to push them all around that way. There we go, now just so they're next to each other. I'm gonna fill these with a gradient. So I'm gonna select both of these. I have my fill color highlighted as opposed to, or excuse me, active as opposed to the stroke. And I'm just gonna come over to gradient. I'm gonna apply a gradient. So a couple things you can do with the gradient. You can just click on here. Whoops, come on. There we go, to add new slider positions and then move these around to kind of adjust the gradient. Um, we also forgot to cut this little shape out here, so we'll have to go and do that. And I wanna rotate this so it's a little bit angled, so I think that looks good. So let's fix this guy up here. Grab those two shapes, Shift M, delete that out. And we also are missing the circle cut out because we've got it right here, but we don't have it actually cut out of this shape and that's what we need. So I'm gonna select both of these, hold Shift M and now cut that out. Now those are cut out of the full trim like we would see in reality. And so there you are, really quick and easy ways to draw perfectly accurate trims in Illustrator using basic circles and squares and rectangles and ovals. So, so simple. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And for more free tips, tutorials, and advice you don't see here on YouTube, head on over to my website, SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com.